G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. In today, we are gonna, wow, I've had a lot of caffeine. In today's video, we are gonna be discussing uh, the priority pick situation, and this conversation is mostly circling around North Melbourne, but I think it's worth just including West Coast. Come on, give us a priority pick. Now, just discussing broadly the, the priority pick um, that may potentially be awarded to North Melbourne um, and the general concept in its essence. So you, you may or may not, and probably don't, remember that I did a video on this uh, last year, uh, particularly around North Melbourne, and then potentially getting a priority pick or priority pick assistance package and we do know that they eventually got awarded one but in quite an unconventional way. So to just cover off uh, exactly what the priority pick is there for, for anyone who doesn't know, essentially it is uh, an extra draft pick to assist clubs that have been struggling for a long period of time and the history of the priority pick basically was back in the day uh, up until I think the Demons tanking saga, if you recorded less than four and a half wins in a season, so 22 premiership points, you would be eligible for an end of first round priority pick, which means that everyone else gets cycled down one and you would get what is now pick 19, but it used to be pick 17 when there were 16 teams. If you did that two years in a row, you would get a start of draft priority pick. Now, if I'm not mistaken, in 2001, I think it was, three teams qualified for a start of first round priority pick. So it went one, two, three, four, five, six with the same team. I feel like I said that in last year's video. Anyway, sorry if I'm repeating myself. So it used to be objective criteria. If you did that for two years in a row, obviously you get a start of first round pick, um, which is bloody generous. That has now moved to subjective criteria because of the Demons tanking saga. So essentially like, obviously if a, if a club knows that they need to record X number of wins to secure, you know, an end of first round or a start of first round priority pick, it's very easy for them to manipulate how many wins they're going to have in a season. Now, I'm not saying every club did this, although to some extent, I'm sure it happened a lot more than just Melbourne. But when Melbourne basically were outed as having tanked, Jagger Skillbeck actually did a really, really good video on the Demons tanking saga. So go check that out. But essentially, since then, the AFL have moved to a more subjective criteria where they will make an assessment based on a number of arbitrary factors that we're not completely privy to. And they will decide basically if a team deserves a priority pick. Essentially, what this does is eliminate um, top teams who have been good for a while, shooting to the bottom of the ladder and acquiring draft picks very, very quickly. It also, in theory, negates the possibility of a team tanking. So for instance, in Melbourne's uh, season where they acquired picks one and two, Tom Scully and Jack Trengove, that really worked out for them. There were a number of examples uh, throughout that season where players were rested or faking injuries, supposedly, or players being moved to the ground, Ruckman been thrown in the back line. The AFL could investigate that and just say, no priority pick for you. So that's the brief background to it. Um, and so that the, the lead into that is now that we've got this arbitrary priority pick system where clubs have to apply and the AFL decides whether or not to give you one. So we saw in uh, with Gold Coast in uh, 2019, it was with Matthew Rao, they had won 23 games over five seasons. Obviously a brand new club had never made finals. The AFL gave them a start of first round pick uh, and probably something else. But at the crux of it, they got Matthew Rao and Noah Anderson. Last year with North Melbourne, who have had a pretty terrible run over a number of years since they basically fell out of the finals back in 2017. I can't remember exactly. They've been irrelevant since then, respectfully, North Melbourne. The AFL decided last year that instead of giving them priority picks in and around the first round, which has been customary in the past, North Melbourne were gifted a future second round and a future third round pick on the proviso that they had to trade those picks for established players. And that's how they ended up with Griffin Logue and Darcy Tucker. And they were also given two extra list spots to accommodate that. So here we are 12 months later, and we are having the same conversation about North Melbourne, because despite the fact that they started the year 2-0, Alistair Clarkson's at the helm. They've just beaten the Dockers in Perth, which looked like a good achievement. And, and to be fair, is still a pretty good win. Things were looking pretty rosy. They've lost 15 on the bounce since then. And suddenly we're talking about how we can assist this club to get back to relevancy once again. So to further contextualize where North Melbourne are at, they've won 11 games out of the last 67. Uh, in the last 60, they've won seven, with one of them being a draw as well. Uh, they've lost Zerhard to syndesmosis recently. Alistair Clarkson hasn't coached much there this year. He was their big shining uh, knight. <laughs> Griffin Logue's done an ACL, one of those players that they traded for as part of the assistance package. So things have just gone horribly wrong for North Melbourne. On top of that, they may lose Mackay through free agency, and they've got some out of contract veterans who in theory, you want around on a list to make you more competitive. Ben Cunnington, Zeebel, and Goldstein, they're all out of contract, and we don't know the future prospects for those guys staying on the list. So at the moment, the situation is dire, 
There's been a long gap between their last finals appearance. They're losing established talent. They're gonna lose veterans probably, although that's kind of up to them as to whether they lose those veterans. Assessing how the priority pick assistance went last year is tough because the two players they traded for, Darcy Tucker hasn't had a massive impact on the club and Griffin Logue has now done an ACL. So it's difficult to assess the execution of how that's benefited them. And it's also tough to assess, you know, Alistair Clarkson should in theory have a good impact on that club and he hasn't really been there. I think there's talk of him sort of returning, maybe not a senior coach straight away, but he's not too far off. But long story short, they're in dire straits at the moment. And it's a little bit different to West Coast because I believe West Coast, first of all, isn't applying for a priority pick. And second of all, uh, has won a premiership in the last five years, which I believe would discount them anyway. So as it currently stands, North Melbourne is already in conversation with the AFL around a priority pick assistance package. So it'd be interesting to see how that eventuates. So what do we think of priority picks in general? I'm sure there are 17 other clubs right now who don't want to get pushed further down the draft order. And, and I think the draft has got to be, to some extent, held with a, a little bit more value. And what I mean by that is it's already so compromised with academy picks. And in my last video, I talked about players dictating where they want to end up. Tasmania is entering the competition soon. North Melbourne potentially getting picks two and three in addition to, you know, Mackay potentially getting a first round compensation pick. North Melbourne end up with picks two, three, and four. This actually has a really significant impact on other clubs rebuilding. And it may not apply to West Coast. And so this is not necessarily a biased take because if West Coast have a higher pick, then we don't get pushed down, at least not our first pick. But that is a blow, I think, for everyone else. There's also the conversation about how much can a priority pick really assist them? I don't think North Melbourne has had trouble getting access to, to quality talent in the last few years. Last year, they ended up with Sheasel and Wardlaw. Sheasel and Wardlaw, to different extents, have already come in and played to a pretty good standard, particularly Sheasel. He's looking like a 150 gamer already. You know, they could add another Harry Sheasel and they're not going to improve straight away. So there's no way of like band-aiding this issue in particular. And so I'm kind of torn, you know, if they get a start of first round pick, I just think that's too much of a blow to the rest of the competition. And let's say it's an end of first round pick, pick 20. How much is that really doing to assist North Melbourne's issues? Because like I said, they've got enough talent on the list in terms of what they've accumulated through the draft, you know, you go back all the way to LDU. Uh, Jai Simkin was a first round pick. Taron Thomas picked nine through their academy. George Wardlaw, Harry Sheasel, Will Phillips was pick three. You know, their, their access has been fine. It's what they've been able to do with the talent that they've got on the list that has let them down. So established players does make sense. And by that, I mean the assistance package last year, which was designed to help them get established talent onto their list. So on the one hand, you've got this, this need to help out a struggling club that is going to struggle financially and is not necessarily safe indefinitely. And it was the same logic that, uh, that got Gold Coast help as well. There's another issue where, you know, you don't want to compromise the rest of the competition too much by diluting the draft. And then thirdly, I just don't think a priority pick in its isolation is really going to help North Melbourne too much. Andrew Dillon, who is the new CEO, has come out and said, I think we showed last year that there are different ways of doing it. It's not necessarily picks at the front end of the draft, which have happened historically. So that to me does foreshadow the idea that North are not gonna get something really juicy at the top end of this draft. And that's before we even discuss, you know, what do we actually think of priority picks as a concept in terms of how fair it is? Some people are of the, the opinion that you shouldn't have priority picks in addition to the, you know, the reverse order draft system, because that in itself is an equalization measure anyway. And one school of thought is that priority picks are literally just a mechanism for rewarding incompetence. So I've heard this argument against West Coast, you know, West Coast wouldn't deserve one because of the mismanagement of their list over the last few years, trading out of drafts, letting their veterans stay for too long. They find themselves in a hole without any talent and they shouldn't get priority picks to try and compensate for that. And to be honest, that's pretty logical. But every single priority pick that's been awarded has to some extent come about as a result of some sort of mismanagement. Personally, I don't like the priority pick concept. I think if you're going to have it exist, it's got to be less arbitrary than it is, a little bit less subjective. It's got to be fair for all clubs. And while I accept that West Coast don't get one because they were successful five years ago, I actually do think that is quite fair. I'm still skeptical about the fact that this system would be distributed fairly amongst all 18 clubs, or is it going to be biased against clubs who financially cannot sustain being poor for too long? So like I said, I'm not a huge fan of the priority pick concept, but on the other hand, I am sympathetic of the need to sustain these clubs. And I think it's very easy for me to say that as a as 
as a fan of a club that is probably not going to run out of money. One interesting like side option here that the AFL have for assisting North Melbourne is this kid in the draft called Riley Sanders. So and Riley Sanders just won the Lark Medal as the best performed player at the Under-18 Championships. He's a bit of a gun inside mid, uh, potentially probably top six or seven on talent right now. Riley Sanders hails from Tasmania and previously was not considered a next generation academy talent because he wasn't indigenous. Now this is something that John Ralph said on the couch, which I found really interesting. Riley Sanders has gone to the lengths of proving in the last six weeks that he is actually of indigenous descent because he wants to play for North Melbourne. North Melbourne have an academy set up there, so the only benefit to proving that he's part of the academy is to end up at North Melbourne, and apparently he wants to end up there. So one option that is being floated about is that North Melbourne could have the option of pre-listing him as an academy pick. Now, just to be perfectly clear, under the current rules, regardless of having an academy pick or not, if Riley Sanders was deemed to be a top 40 prospect, which he absolutely is, North Melbourne wouldn't be able to match a bid on him anyway. So even if currently Riley Sanders is part of their academy, North Melbourne wouldn't have access to him. But one thing that's been suggested is the AFL may bend these rules and allow Riley Sanders to pre-list with North Melbourne. So he obviously wants to end up there and North Melbourne absolutely would jump at that. According to John Ralph on the couch, he suggested the other clubs are relatively okay with this. Because at the end of the day, this is a top prospect who wants to play for North Melbourne, and it is seen as not diluting the draft pool, even though it totally is. What they don't want is to have North Melbourne to end up with picks two, three, and four. The only issue with this is that it is just completely arbitrarily bending the rules of the academy in a very random way to come up with a particular outcome. And it probably does set a precedent for future priority picks with uh, teams being able to pre-list their academy players. But again, feeds into the whole conversation again about to how much an 18 year old, even as a top 10 prospect is likely to help North Melbourne because it's not the access to talent that they've struggled with, it's getting them all to play well as a team. Anyway, that was kind of me just spewing all of my thoughts in no particular order about the priority pick prospect of North Melbourne. So I guess to summarize it, West Coast haven't applied for a priority pick, North Melbourne have. As a side note, I actually have a feeling West Coast may not have bid on a priority pick in the hope that it makes North Melbourne less likely to get one. Does that make sense? If West Coast bid for a priority pick, they can't complain if North Melbourne ended up with one. West Coast wouldn't receive one anyway, but I wonder if there's some funny buggers in there. So North Melbourne, if anyone, uh, potentially get a priority pick assistance package. One particular option is Riley Sanders pre-listed as an academy prospect. Another option is, you know, future picks again to trade for established players. I talked about Brody Grundy uh, recently in another video as potentially ending up at a third club in three years, but potentially Brody Grundy in North Melbourne actually kind of makes sense. Assuming they get an extra list spot for him, Todd Goldstein might not play on next year. He's going to get all the game time he wants as the number one rock. And he's a half decent player. I still think he's a good player. And guess what, North Melbourne? You can have Andrew Gaff. Anyway, guys, that's just all my thoughts. Um, I think North Melbourne will end up with some sort of priority pick assistance. My real preference is it doesn't dilute the first round of the draft, I suppose. That is, in summary, what I hope. But I'm skeptical that it's going to help them at all, to be honest. So we'll see what happens. But let me know in the comments what you think of the priority pick system in general and whether you think North Melbourne should end up with one. And if so, we're calling it a priority pick, but I guess I'm referring to an assistance package. But what I would hate is to see them end up with pick four or, you know, picks 11 and 19 or something ridiculous like that. My honest feel is that if Alistair Clarkson finally gets to have an extended run as senior coach, that we will see improvement under North Melbourne. It will happen. They probably do need to add some established talent. You know, if we're going to lose some veterans, they probably need to add a Grundy, um, Andrew Gaff, Jack Billings, something like that. You know, underappreciated talents at other clubs um, that will help them improve in the short term. But, but anyway, guys, let me know in the comments what you think. I uh, hope you're enjoying all the content lately. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.